we have talked a fair amount today, a little off and on, about um, those evil corporate folks. And uh, we have one of them uh, who's, I think, are you fully recovered from the corporate world, or is it kind of a 12-step process? Okay. Well, that's that's okay, because um, I, I'm, I'm, I like to say I'm a fully recovered lawyer. Um, my wife and kids will vehemently disagree that, with that. Um, so our next presenter, um, Dimitri and I, um, I think we kind of happened to sit at the table together, probably like 08, 09, something like that. Um, he was at, at Tyco, and I think we were at an employment branding um, conference. And uh, when I was putting together, we kind of stayed in touch on LinkedIn and, and stuff like that. And when I was putting together this event and looking for presenters, one of the things that I was really hoping to, to find is uh, somebody who could come in and sort of give a little bit of that corporate perspective, um, but also the state government, because there are most of the, the folks in this room um, work with the federal government, but we also have a, a few uh, state and local. And even though in, in the federal government, um, I think it's beneficial to learn from what the states are doing. Um, you know, good, bad, or ugly sometimes, and you know, the flip side too. So, Dimitri is going to specifically talk with us about um, about branding, which is something that I think a lot of the federal government agencies, just like the folks in the corporate sector, are waking up to and seeing just how incredibly important um, it is. It, it, it sounds expensive in the short run, but it saves you a ton of money in the long run. Hello. Can you hear me okay? So, um, as Stephen mentioned, I, am, I used to work two half years ago. I was uh, working for a company called TE Connectivity Now. It was called Tyco Electronics at the time. Right now, I'm in charge of um, the um, Bureau for Workforce Development at the Pennsylvania Department of Labor in the industry. So, um, well, and obviously, you can tell by my Pennsylvania Dutch accent that I'm not from around here, too. Um, so, uh, what I do right now in my current job is that um, my staff, I'm in charge of about 450 people uh, working statewide, and we are um, serving Pennsylvanians in the, what is called American Job Centers. You have, you know, we have them nationwide in Pennsylvania, they're called Career Links. So, we're not really specifically recruited at colleges anymore. I mean, not in the job. But we do work with colleges a lot. And I do work with lots of state agencies that are interested in college, in, in recruiting college students. So therefore, I do have some knowledge about how it's done in the state, at least in the state of Pennsylvania, and how well Pennsylvania. But more importantly, I would like to talk to you about the, um, how it's done in the private sector. Um, just a little bit of background uh, so that you can understand why I'm, I guess, authorized to talk about this. Uh, or qualified, let's let me put it this way. Um, that when I was named, I have, a, I have a degree in mechanical engineering, so I'm a mechanical engineer by training. I have a PhD in that. Worked as a mechanical engineer for a long time. Got bored, decided to do something else and put my life. And since the company, it was the company that was making connectors, or still making connectors, and you know, I'm, I'm surprised they're still functioning after I'm gone, but you know, that's not a story. But um, as I was looking for things to do, uh, I saw that the, uh, I, was, I was involved as an engineer in the university recruiting process for the company. And what became very, very clear is that the company has absolutely no idea how to do it. Every department was doing their own thing. So we would go to, let's say, Penn State, right? We would go to Penn State and we'd be standing uh, talking to the students and we'd have like three, four tables from the same company, just different departments. You know? And, and that was bizarre. It was really confusing to the students. So I was glad that they started thinking about centralizing the function. So they started looking for somebody to lead that effort. And uh, I volunteered, I went through the process, and I'm very glad that I got that job, because by that time I had the MBA, and I had a passion for, for branding, for um, marketing, and, and plus, I love the company that I was in. So, um, what I tried to do, I tried to centralize everything. That was my main goal, that was my main um, 
a reason for, for getting hired, really. And branding turned out to be one of the key things that we did well. And uh, what I mean by that is that really two years after that, we not only were able to attract students, students were lining up. They wanted to talk to us because they already knew what the company was all about. We knew why they're interested in, in us. They knew the, our locations. They were seeking us out. They were very disappointed if there was a campus that we did not go to because, oh, I'm there only graduating from that college. And so we were able to create the, uh, the movement. We were able to create the, uh, uh, the, the interest in, in, in students. And now working for the, uh, for the state, I can tell you that we have a problem. We have a problem, and I hope you agree with me. According to a recent article in, in, uh, uh, in Wall Street Journal, right now, um, let me get it right. Federal employment, uh, uh, according to the survey that was done last year, or based on the data from last year, only 7% of federal employees are of the age 30 and under, right? And that is the lowest it's been for the last maybe eight, 10 years, something like that. In comparison to the private sector, this number is 25%. So you do the math, and to me, even if you go back to your work and you look around, you'll probably most likely see folks 45 and plus, right? Not a lot of young folks, especially not a lot of college graduates. So we're not here to address that problem, because I'm sure there's, there's many, many reasons for that problem. But one of the things that I'm sure plays into this is that students do not really understand what state employment or federal employment is all about. So, um, and that's what, what, I, what I'll try to highlight here. Clearly, I'll be the first one to admit that 20 minutes is not nearly enough to scratch the surface. Not nearly enough to, to, to explore it in detail. So that's why I'll try to scratch a little bit of the surface, okay? So, and that's why you'll see that my slides are absolutely pathetic. And I'll be the first one to admit. And I know how to add color. And I know how to do these fancy animations and zoom and color and, 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 and sounds and all. I decided not to do it. Because I'd rather you listen to me and get something from what you internalize that from, from you read. Because chances are somebody sitting in the back will not even be able to read what I have on my slides. So, having said that, let me ask you this. How many of you consider yourselves university recruiting expert? How many of you, thank you, not, not a single hand. How many of you consider, well, how many of you recruit at universities or colleges? Wonderful. And uh, what I saw here is the majority of hands went up. But if you were to ask people who have absolutely no, um, no understanding or no experience in doing university recruiting. Every single one of them would be university recruiting expert. I know that. Because in my past job, as I was kind of gearing up, as I was doing my, uh, my you know, putting together university recruiting program, everybody had an opinion on how to do it right. I mean, every hiring manager said, oh, ask me, I know. I know because my son just graduated and he went through the process, right? Or my niece is about to graduate and they're looking at some, you know, looking at career fairs and so forth. So everybody's an expert. Now when you talk about branding, it's even worse because everybody's an expert in branding. We are all experts in branding. We, which one on the, uh, the TV or the radio right now? The branding is in, in full swing. Christmas shopping. And every company, every, show, uh, every, uh, every store says, pick me, pick me. You know, I have the better prices. I have this. Or if you buy a $25,000 car, we'll give you a $10 gift card. <laughs> yeah, so we are we're in the middle of this branding campaign right now. And it's not what we're going to talk about here. All right, I'll stop wasting time on the introduction. And uh, let me tell you a story. It's a real story from uh, my past experience. And you all understand, you all know that uh, that universities and university recruiting works by its own laws. It has its own cycle. It has its own life. And for state government or state agencies or federal agencies to show up in, in the university recruiting arena and say, we're big and strong, come work for us, it's just not going to work. Because we're not following the laws 
of this function that exists. So the only way we can be successful in, in university recruiting is instead of trying to fight these laws, let's go with the flow. Let's understand those laws, let's work with those laws, and one of those laws is that there's a cycle. You know, those students who are graduating in May, they are interested in securing their you know, employment in the fall. Those of them who are lazy will come to career fairs in the spring. So basically, there are really two shots or two, 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 two opportunities that we as an employer have to attract those candidates. Or we can post the job and, and hope somebody bites. We do that too. Um, so as we attend career fairs, we will be competing for the same talent as all those private companies who have a lot of money, who have fantastic colors, who have a lot of good stories to tell. And we, as the state or federal agency, very rarely know how to tell our story. And an example, that's, that's what I wanted to, to tell you about, is that one time I was at a career fair in Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh is the um, University of Pittsburgh. Fairly big career fair, I want to say maybe 80 companies or 80 organizations are recruiting. Uh, a lot of local companies. Uh, and uh, we had a table and me being in charge of university recruiting. I did not really spend a lot of time at the table talking to students. I was doing my research. I would go, walk around, talk to employers, talk to students, understand what's new, what's, what's cutting edge, how, the company, how other companies were doing that. And somewhere in the corner, there was this table. There were two wonderful ladies standing there, very, very quiet, very, very bored. They had some kind of backdrop um, display. They had uh, those standard chachkis, the, uh, the stress ball. You've seen them all, right? The lanyard that said the name of the, uh, of the agency they were representing. They had some brochures to give, and that was it. And they were standing there by themselves. Not a single student sight. Students would go, they'd look at that, and they'd keep on walking. And they'd go up to the, I don't know, the American Eagle, for example. They, were, they had a table right there, and they were throwing t-shirts at, at, at the crowd. What, what chance did those ladies have against American Eagle? Come on. Or those clients who was hiring, and uh, they were looking for mechanical engineers, and they had all those different things to give away, and, and they, they had a, a constantly running uh, kind of presentation about the things that they do, and it was very, very exciting. So those two ladies, they were standing there, and uh, you know, they looked really, really sad. <laughs> so I walked up to them and I started talking to them. And it turned out that they actually had a fantastic story to tell. They were representing one of the local, one of the state agencies, and they were recruiting for somebody in that area. But they had absolutely no idea how to sell. They had absolutely no idea how to make their story interesting or engaging, or how to meet the students where they are. And we'll talk about that, hopefully. We'll have time. Okay. So, I do not expect you to read it from, from the back, but uh, let's talk about what it is, what, 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 employment, uh, what employer branding really is. So the term was coined in 1990, I think it was first published, or it was mentioned in literature in 1996. Two gentlemen from Harvard, they were doing some research on branding in human resources. And they published the article about employer branding. And slowly, the term took off. It started having a life of its own. And now, it is a thing, it's a, it's a, it's a power of nature that we just cannot ignore. This is the thing that we either do if we want to recruit students, or we ignore it and read the results. And the results will be really, really sad. So, uh, what the employer branding is. Number one, it's a comprehensive recruiting strategy. So it's not a one-time thing. It's not a... Uh, it's not a, even an approach, it's a way of life. And uh, the main idea of this way of life is position your organization as an attractive, desirable place to work so that the students, the students are interested in you. Also, it is a focused corporate message. Now, let's talk about corporate messaging. We send, as a corporation, as an organization, as a state or federal agency, we send messages about us all the time. By the way we do business, by the way we interact with people, by the way we answer the phone, we produce or project an image about the organization. So when it comes to recruiting, 
all those voices or all those messages, they have to be unified. They have to point in the same direction. They have to position the organization as a very desirable place to work so that the students can see themselves as future employees of this organization. Uh, there is a long-term vision. And what I mean by that is that um, we cannot do it one season, and then the next season change messaging and expect some, some, some kind of good results or some kind of consistency. Students talk. Universities or career counselors at the universities, they talk. They talk to students. Therefore, we have to be consistent, and we have to, to be sure that our long-term approach makes sense and resonates with students. And there are a few things about what it's not. It is not an advertising campaign. Even though, it, when, you, when, I, when I said that everybody's an expert in branding, that's what people really think about. They think that all we have to do is throw some color on our chachkis or, or print out some handouts and make them attractive, and students will immediately want to work for us. No, of course not. Uh, catchy taglines. I've seen those, oh my god. I, I, I wish I kept track of all those catchy taglines that some companies used. Really sad. Join us, yeah, I told you it was on the, you know, the, the bottom line. Um, a wish list. This is a very, very important because it kind of touch upon, touches upon one of the main pitfalls. The wish list is that, what I mean by that is that uh, very often companies or, or organizations uh, try to position their companies as something that they would want this company to be perceived, not so much as what this company really is. And so what happens is that somebody gets attracted, you're successful in your messaging, and your, your, your image of the company that you produ uh, produce is so attractive, people line up and they, they get the job. And then reality hits. All of a sudden, it's not the company that they thought it would be. It's a completely different story. So it's gonna happen, you know what's gonna happen. They'll leave, they'll leave, and they'll call, they'll cost your company, your, your organization a lot of money. So you might, you might as well do it right the first time. And therefore, what's important, we'll talk about the process, you know, the, the, the very top level process, but um, what's very important is that the uh, external message, okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> that the external message uh, matches the internal uh, culture and the internal image the current employees have. Um, obviously, it's not it's not a quick fix. So let's talk about the process. The process. Look at this. Only four steps. Very simple. Very simple, really, if you think about it. But in reality, there's a lot of work that that goes into each one of them. First of all, you need to understand how you want to position your company. You need to do some research. And this is probably the most critical piece of this whole thing. Um, what I put down there is internal and external. The reality of it is that uh, you want to understand what the current students are looking for. You want to understand what matters to them. You want to understand what attracts them to this company versus the, that company. And at the same time, you do some, some research about the company itself. What are the current employees thinking about the company? Because what you don't want to have, you don't want to have these branding materials, this printed stuff that you take to career fairs and get that stuff presented by somebody who hates working for that company. So what do you think is going to happen? The, uh, the brochure says that we're fantastic, we're this, we're that, and then somebody who really is a prisoner and is doing the career fair only because the boss sent him to, to that career fair, not because he's passionate or he wants to, to bring new stuff, I mean new people into the company. Mm -hmm. Clearly, that's a big disconnect. Um, the uh, develop EVP. EVP stands for employer, uh, employer Value Proposition. So this is really the essence of your messaging. That this is what you... Uh, that's your differentiator. This is how you are different from everybody else. And the truth is that truly really just about every government agency has a fantastic story to tell. Fantastic. Because as we'll, as we'll see on the, on the slide that follows, um, one of the things that students are interested in, really, most of them want to send sacred work. Most of them want to, to, to bring value 
to give back, to work for people, and to matter. And we, as the state or government entity, do just that. That's, that's really, if you think about it from the very basic level, that's why we exist. We serve people. So if you take the mission of your organization and spin it, and, and, and position it in a way that the students can relate to, all of a sudden it will connect with what they're looking for. Um, then number three is communicate this employer value proposition. And the way you do it, there's a variety of different ways of doing this. Well, we can use social media, but based on what I know about the place that I work, for us to send out Twitter feed, uh, the pool has to be made ahead of time. And the, the, uh, we, have a, we have 10 taglines, or 10 messages that we're allowed to send out. So think about student you know, following that Twitter feed. Really? So if, if we are to do, to do branding, we better start using the tools that the students use. If we are to communicate the message, we better meet them where they are. So, and that goes again, that goes back to internal and external. Internal communication. Chances are, different parts of the organization do not quite see the organization the same way. So if we are to, to approach the whole problem holistically, the ideal outcome would be that inside the organization, everybody views the organization the same way as the people coming in, and as the way we want to position the organization to the outside world. So that's why I separated internal and external. And then we measure. What I mean by that is that, you know, at first we'll probably measure it very, very um, uh, unscientific. You will probably measure it anecdotally. You'll measure it by number of people that you remember seeing at, the, at your booth at the career fair. Last year there was nobody. This year we had five. Yes. But what it means is that it's an improvement. It's an improvement because if you talk to those five and you really understand why they stopped by, you can make certain improvements, you can make adjustments, and you repeat the cycle all over again. And the next year, you'll see 50. So, um, let's talk about the, 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 the resources that are available. Um, oh, by the way, each one of these steps cannot be done alone by one person. It cannot even be done by a group of people. This is a massive, massive, massive endeavor. Um, the research can be done, usually there are, there are professionals who do research. And there are many sources when I'm doing it in selling. And plus, I'm not even in a position of selling. Because I'm going to, if I mention this name, I don't, I'm, I'm still debating. But if you mention the name of that company that produces, that provides that service. But if I'm going to mention it, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, what you can do about those spending a lot of money because I understand that we're all in the budget. So um, there's a lot of resources out there who can provide this information, who can do research for you. Obviously, there'll be a lot of branding companies, companies or marketing companies that'll be saying, me, me, because we know how to do it. Reality is that there's not really a lot of um, companies that really, really know how to do that, especially when it comes to doing research. Um, so let's move on to the, what this is, this is a freely available on the website results or report created or conducted by a company called Universal. Um, and uh, what, what this means is that they, they asked current students, what is, it, what is it that you want? And uh, among the top five goals identified by those students, they're looking for work-life balance. They're looking for job security. They're dedicated to a cause or feel I am serving a great group. Be competitively, competitively or intellectually challenged and be a leader or manager of people. Now pause for a second. I am willing to bet that if you think about your organizations that you represent, you find some things on this list that your company stands for or your organization stands for. So that means that if you think about it, and if you use this information the right way, and if you structure the messaging the right way so that this, it resonates with the students, 
You're halfway there, really. Um, and uh, the next question that the students were asked, there are some other, there's actually many, many, many questions that the students were asked during the survey. But uh, one, of the, um, one of the questions was, what are you looking for in a company? Um, the, as, as you look at different employers. Well, the one that I highlighted, number nine, is uh, stands for high future earnings. So pay is on the list, it's in the top 10, but it's not even close to the, to the top of the top 10. So there are so many other things that students are looking for. But more importantly, they are looking for making a difference. They're looking for leadership opportunities. They're looking for ethical, ethical standards that the organization stands for. And again, if you reflect, if you think about your organizations, chances are there's a lot of attributes here that your, your organization has presented on that list. So um, the good news is that there are some government agencies or federal agencies that are doing amazingly well when it comes to employer branding. Uh, because again, according to this company's research, uh, there are quite a few federal agencies that, 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 that students want to work with. And they, the, those agencies are, if I remember correctly, I don't have a slide for that, but again, as I said, this is freely available information, go look it up. Um, national security agencies, they're up somewhere in the top of the list. And you know what these guys do? They're doing an amazing job at the career fairs. I remember, I was, uh, again, one of the career fairs, and I was standing by their table, kind of watching them do their magic. And uh, the student, uh, you know, one student said, so uh, what am I going to be doing? What will my day look like? And the lady with a fantastic smile, she said, well, I can tell you, but I'll have to kill you. And, and uh, <laughs> of course, that was a joke. It was very lighthearted. But at the same time, these guys, they, they were given enough glimpse or enough information to think about what the job will look like and what they'll be doing in their job. And uh, of course, they played off of the, uh, the, you know, the this adventure-seeking crowd, clearly. Um, but uh, some other agencies that are doing amazingly well uh, with students are Department of State, um, different health organizations or health agencies, um, Job Corps, I believe. So there. So I mean, uh, there, there's there's really a lot of good organizations that know how to take advantage of the branding and how to send the right message so that students are actually lining up. One thing that I promised to tell you about this universal stuff, since I mentioned that name, well, here's a secret. If you ever decide to subscribe for customized reports that this company provides, because that's how they make money. Oh, by the way, is there anybody from Universal here? Okay, 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 good. So, you know, the, the company makes money by providing customized reports, and the, the reports can be customized by your university, by university major, by um, uh, whatever, by location of the universities and so forth. The good news is that students' preferences do not change every year. So you buy research and it's good for 10 years, maybe five years at least. So and, uh, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good information that, that this company produces is available on their website for free. So. What I'm saying is that the research is there. All you have to do is want to make a difference and want to use it. So, um, I think this is really all I wanted to talk to you about. There's so much more that we can be talking about when it comes to, to employer branding. I just wanted to uh, to let you know that, that this is a, a very special field. This is a special area that if you do not pay any attention to it, uh, it'll become more of a, you'll, you'll, you'll see the results. Oh, actually, you, we are seeing the results right now. So what I'm challenging you with is make it work, because this is, this is science. The results will follow, I promise you. Ah, here's one last thing. If in case, in case somebody wants to, uh, to talk about university recruiting and uh, People are branding, and you think that I have something to offer or anything to offer. Here's you can connect with me. This is my, you know, after hours information. 
because I, I now I work for uh, for uh, for for a state agency, and it's not in my job description to be to, to be talking about the university recruiting. But that's where my heart is. So, thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Hi, my name is Jessica Kohler, and I work for the Peace Corps. And I'm wondering if you have any suggestions. Um, we're a small agency, and a lot of these things we're identifying is something that we really need to put into practice, but it's not necessarily at our level to be able to institute some of that. So talking to some of the higher ups about how this could make a difference and how significant it is, do you have any best practices for that? That's a tough one. That is a tough one, and uh, this is something that um, that they call in the um, in, in, in the job description when they look for the for those purple squirrels that we all do in HR. Uh, they, 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 they say that it's influencing without authority. So really, it's one of those things, is that you have to, you have to build your case and, and, and sell it. Because you will not be able to do it by yourself. Somebody will have to approve the purchase order. Somebody will have to approve even the, the strategy for this. So what you can do, you can, you can say, hey, this is what we have not done. And this is the results. But if we try, based on somebody's information. You can connect with, with, with the agencies that do it well. And they've done their research, and they'll be able to provide you with data, and, okay, because they can compare it before and after. And you, you, if your position is like, OK, if we, if we try this, based on that agency's results, even a little increase will really help us. That's my best answer. And keep on, keep on banging on that door, because you know, eventually they'll, they'll listen. Just a comment and a question to your point. Um, on the business case, we, we found a, a corporate executive board will tell you you'll be able to source from 20% more the talent pool. There you go. 60, offer 11%. Less of a premium on a starting salary for a well defined EVP. And then you'll retain first year hires about 5%. My question is, and, you, and I want to thank you. We do branding, you know, and we compete with that company that you may have worked for. Okay. Uh, my question is, in the process, the branding process that you've been through, um, typically, what have you found to be a reasonable amount of time to allow? Because it is kind of an iterative process, and it's one that you want to continually not only look at in your EVP, leadership interviews, leadership aspirations, the existing workforce uh, insights or existing and then the external market perceptions, but for federal, we have challenges with the Paperwork Reduction Act. Right. It's the one time, I believe, that agencies can tell that unique story uh, outside of corporate brand and mission statement. So I guess ultimately my question is, how much time do you feel is reasonable to allow? Because we get clients saying, I need a brand next month, and they don't understand what's involved. They right. think creative. Right. They just want new creative because this stuff looks old. And, and, and so they don't realize there's focus groups, there's interviews, there's police surveys. Mm -hmm. But we have events, mm -hmm. we have Universal, if you have a lot of these pieces. Reasonably, what would you advise in terms of the processes that you find? How long usually do you find? Well, th this is a really loaded question, and here's why. Because even if you do branding fantastically, and this is the only thing that you do, you really have not done much attracting talent. Because the, the real engagement with the universities means and that's why I, I like the, the title that I used to have. It was Manager of University Relations. It was not the Manager of University Recruiting. So the really the biggest impact you can make is connect with universities on a variety of different levels and be there. Have your people be there. Do presentations to students. Help them move during their loop day. And, and wear the t-shirts that say, identify your company. Create. Just think outside the box. There's so many low-cost things that you can do that will you know, provide branding because during those interactions, you'll be able to really deliver the message. You'll be able to um, you know, really tell the story that matters because you'll not be one of many companies, you know, a hundred companies in career fair. It becomes a blur for students, right? So you, you try to get outside the cycle and, and, and touch them at different points at different times. Absolutely. So, but you know, if, if we're talking about branding specifically, I, I really I'm, I'm struggling because it, it depends on how, how, how deep you want to go. You know, in my company that you know we worked on, on, on the things uh, you know on our branding, 
we went as far as we developed a, uh, a touch screen presentation with lots of different animations, movies, uh, day in life, lots of information that was available online and was available during career fair. When students are standing in line to talk to us, they're playing with a you know, big and shiny thing. Uh, and and uh, of course, to develop something like that, that's a year, right? Of course. There you go. It was worthwhile to come here. Absolutely. Right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much.